Yeah. So, hey guys, welcome to this video. Today I've got um, Susanna and Joe. Yeah. You may have seen um, these two first years at Jesus College in my early videos, but today we'll be talking about what medicine and veterinary medicine is like in your first years. Shout out to Medify UK for making this video possible. Make sure you go and check out their resources, the link will be down in the description below. So, how many weeks has it been? It's been like six, seven weeks now? It's been a long time. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time. Feels like a really, really long time, but no time at all at the same time. Yeah. yeah. It's hard. hard to explain. <laughs> so, yeah, so, um, do you want to tell the camera about yourself? Tell the people, tell the viewers who you are, yeah. how you found it, and a bit about yourself. Go, Joe, you start. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Joe. I'm, um, I'm 18, I'm from uh, Gloucestershire. And um, yeah, I, was, I started my time here at Cambridge, Jesus College, the, the best college, may I add. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's been really good fun. It's, I'm not sure how I expected it, but it's been quite, the workload it has been tough, but it's a sort of step up that I wanted, that I felt you know, I've, I've benefited from. You know, it can be quite intense, and some of the lectures are quite difficult, and sometimes you come out of a lecture and you're like, not quite sure what's happened in this lecture. But you no, know, the supervision systems there have really helped you know, consolidate things, and you know, lectures. No, I'm sorry, lectures, essays. You know, not every uh, you know, friends at other medical schools aren't doing many essays. But actually, I find if I don't quite get something, and I have to write an essay on it afterwards. I, it's really helped. You understood. And well. yeah, yeah, and it, I know, it's not. As, I'm not sure it's as many essays as I actually expected. <laughs> I only do about you know, one and a half a week. <laughs> Gosh, okay. one and a half maybe a two, week. two. I don't know. Um, just wait till a second, wait till a second. <laughs> so how have you found yeah. it, Susanna? Um, so introduce yourself to me. I'm Susanna, I'm a first year vet med, I'm from Poland. And so far, like, the university has exceeded my expectations in every single way possible. I was afraid that I'll come here and everybody will just sit in the room and study the whole day, but it's completely not like that. It's amazing. Um, you learn to do a lot of stuff in one day. You just learn that time, like, I had no idea I could do so many things in one day. It's like, oh, it's, it's amazing. Because you have, like, as Joe said, you have the workload, you have like all your essays, you have the material that you have to go over, but you also have to remember about yourself, so you have to like remember to socialize with your friends, and, like sport, things like that, and it's really nice because you're in an environment where everybody's really keen on doing as many extracurriculars as possible, so you just find yourself joining 10,000 random societies and like having fun. So many random societies. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys mentioned that the university has exceeded all your expectations. Um, you know, one by one, what do you think has been the most amazing thing about you know your time here at Cambridge so far? The most amazing thing, if anything. I know it's quite hard to sort of find one thing. So? <laughs> mm. I know, I guess it's the people here. You have this like, you hear about this stereotype that everyone's you know, really posh, went to Eton, and that's, uh, say it firmly, it's definitely not true. Um, met people from all walks of life, and it's been really great to do. But it's- I'm sure um, if we have any Eton people that are lovely. There are, no there are, sure. there, are yeah. there are a few. I've met a few and I confirm they're, they're very nice. Mm. Um, <laughs> but now everyone's so keen not just to do their subject but everyone's so keen to get involved with whatever you want to do you know um, all these societies you know Susanna mentioned everyone is really happy to get involved and everyone's really great fun as well and you know clearly there's some people who are very hard working and you know, do a little bit less socialising but that, that's cool you know it's not the majority and maybe some people go out every night I can think of one person yeah, in particular. 16 days? 16 days, no, he's on, he's on 18. 16 days in a row? He's on 18 in a row. Who's it? Um, we can't really do it. No, no. but um, he's going for 22. He's going for 22. Um, but, and that, but no, there's, yeah, there's extremes on either end, but you know, that's not everybody, and you'll fit in you know, yeah. whoever you are and whatever and you want to do. And you find that after a month and a half, you know so much about people. Sometimes things that you didn't want to know, but you just get to know people <laughs> quite well. Let's not reveal any secrets. <laughs> Um, so what has been the most amazing thing for you, Susanna? Um, for me, I think just like the people, like everybody, like because you find really like-minded people. You find like you can talk about anything. There will always be somebody interested in the same thing as you. So it's just really easy to make like new friends, and you know that like because me, I, like both of us will spend six years here. So that's really important to just like find people who you connect with and who you know that will be there for you if you're having a bad day. So the people, are, uh, I agree actually, the people do make Cambridge, Cambridge. Yeah. Yeah. Like everyone here loves what they do, and yeah. everyone here loves each other. Yeah. So it's all like a massive community. <laughs> it's everyone's <laughs> so a big kind of community. So you guys have had a term of, oh, nearly a term of work so far. Um, how, is it, like, how has it been? Of course, you guys did A-levels and IB back at school, um, and you've had to sort of get used to the Cambridge sort of system. Has it been, you know, 
have you been able to manage? Has it been um, easy, difficult? I think that seeing us like for the first time because I'm after the IB, so we didn't like we had a choice in subject, but we still have to do like I had to take Polish literature, which is amazing as a science person. Um, but here, the fact that you get to study what you actually enjoy and what you find interesting makes it possible, despite the fact that sometimes it's really hard because you know it's something that you'll use in your life and it's actually useful for what you want to do. So you just get through the workload because. Easier science. And yourself? Yeah, definitely. The workload's been a step up, and it's um, sometimes it's actually really challenging. But that's something I, I know I quite I quite enjoy that. Um, sometimes I remember at school, you know, it'd be a bit. Sometimes it wasn't always didn't quite push you as much as you wanted to, and that's definitely I'm not complaining about that anymore <laughs> uh, whatsoever. They definitely push you. Um, <laughs> so I found it strange, you know, the first like what what two lectures of each sort of lecture series like it was quite A level, and I was like, oh, this is this easy, and then suddenly. It's just oh, words I didn't understand, and it was it was quite a change. It's like a thunderstorm of knowledge. And uh, yeah, and anatomy as well. Suddenly, you have to memorize every muscle, every innovation, every you know, blood supply, all the injuries that can happen to it, its attachment, its origins, and that was quite a that hit, hit me quite hard when I first realized how much anatomy I had to learn. But you yeah, that's true. you adapt and you overcome, and I like I'm so much more efficient than when I started here. So so much more. Mm. And I think what's really important, like you get the clinical relevance immediately, like as vet meds, like once a week we go and have animal handling sessions, so we spend time like cuddling cows and lambs and stuff like that, so it's a lot of fun. Cuddling cows, what do you like about it? Like we also do like more <laughs> medical stuff. Oh, right. <laughs> <That's pretty laughs> At the beginning, the first half an hour, everybody just squeals. It's great. It's great. <laughs> so you guys do dissections as well in first year, yes. so yeah. from last year. Like you do animal dissections, you do human dissections, how has that been? It's very different, isn't it, like being all hands on? very different it's a bit of a shock the first session because you're not really like you don't really know like how to deal with it but afterwards like once you realize that you're learning and this will help you save lives like either animals or people in the future it, like gets easier and it's really really interesting because it just like moves the theory to like actual part like you actually see like the names of all the muscles and nerves and parts of bones that you've been studying about and it's really nice don't do that means, like dissect a whole horse like we have already? for now we're working with a dog and yeah. then we're keeping it for the entire year but during the year we should also have sessions with horses yeah. from what i heard from the veterans in my year we get like a massive like yeah. horse thing come it's up. Cool. Like, humans are a bit easier to handle <laughs> than that. Yeah. so how is how have human body dissections been? yeah it's it was very strange at first you know I've, I've never seen a never seen a dead person before and i wasn't sure what to expect yeah. and it's a bit it's very unusual but actually I'm really glad we do it. It's one of the, the best, definitely one of the best ways to learn anatomy. You look at it in a book, but that's really not what it's like in real life. And it's so important. Actually, I think it's one of the greatest strengths of you know, the Cambridge course, especially over Oxford, um, who don't do it. Yeah. Full body dissection. Do um, no. No, they do dissections. Yeah. And it's really, really helped my, um, my understanding of anatomy, but also I'm not, I'm very thankful to you know, the people who donated their bodies because really, it's such a big thing to do, and you have to remember that while you're you know, dissecting. But I'm I really think it's one of the strengths of Cambridge medicine. In terms of like supervision, so um, for most uh, most of you who don't know, supervisions are small group teaching sessions. That's quite unique to Cambridge and Oxford, right? Yeah. As in back at school, we had you know classes of eleven, twelve, or up to thirty, but. Um, how how is that like have they been quite different is it quite intense is it pretty relaxed and you ask questions it's quite like i quite enjoy it because it gives you the possibility of go over the material and your supervisor will tell you the areas which are like important like what you should focus on and if you have any questions you can just fire away because like it's not embarrassing nobody will laugh at you because you're literally sitting with two of your friends and just chatting it's quite nice and one of our supervisions would just sit down and have tea, which is also lovely. It's a great, like, breather. Is that, is that with jasmine tea or is that um, camel at the moment? He's, he's got some new ones. He's come back from China he's got some new tea. Yeah. What? Oh, we're missing out. Yeah. <laughs> Better go back. Yeah. All right. Um, and how have you found supervisions? Yeah, some of them are pretty intense. They vary, you know, from supervisor to supervisor. Yeah. Um, but it's sort of strange. You go to school, like you said, you have a class of 30 people. Then you go to university and you have a lecture of 300 people. But then you go straight to a supervision of them one to three usually mm -hmm. and it really because I don't know I, I get very easily confused in the lectures and it really helps not only to help them explain it to me but I can ask questions of things I didn't get or especially if you've got questions slightly outside of the, the spec it's sort of extra things because a lot of the time you know in A level or whatever you could google it and you sort of come mm -hmm. up with an answer doesn't it doesn't quite work like that anymore things are very specific to the Cambridge mm -hmm. course and there's not a actual like curriculum to follow mm. so i found it very helpful to sort of just 
ask a lot of questions in them. And if you're prepared and you've done the essay, they can't. They're not too bad. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so like you've got loads of essays and those sort of things to do. What other stuff? What other things do you guys do in first year at the moment? Like, do you have practical submissions and how mm-hmm. do they work? As in, would you like to tell people um, about practicals? So we have um, we have six physiology practicals uh, this term. What do they involve usually? Oh, they are great. <laughs> Quite good fun actually. Good we, fun. we like a. Uh, we electrocute ourselves, you know, um, worms. Di- dissect worms and um, simulate them electrically. Um, Isn't the one where you like, put like, a, a pack in your arm and your arm starts like... Yeah, 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 and you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, exercise your ECGs. They're all very like hands-on and we're always yeah. the test subjects. Mm. So it's quite, quite fun to, see, to do. Yeah. You get to see how like what you learned is like actually true on mm. your own body. So and they're very keen on the fact that we can pretty much ignore the experiment if we want to, if we decide there's something else more interesting that we can test, yeah. test yeah. in that experiment. They're very the pro um, yeah. us doing our own experiments and doing a bit of you know, research on our own. So it's quite useful, isn't it? Instead of like learning physiology just from like the lecture notes, you kind of yeah. apply it practically. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think you've got a physiology practical test as well to look forward to. <laughs> it's a whole I <laughs> So yeah, um, so you've got FAB or VAP for you, uh, MIMS and HOM. So MIMS is biochemistry, HOM is homeostasis. Uh, do you have like, have you met any patients or have you like, had any, you've had animal encounters you mentioned? Uh, we have but animal handling session, but in respect to like patients, we only meet them in our clinical years. For now we're just like meeting healthy animals. But as a vet med, you have like an obligatory 12 weeks of work experience in the first three years and 26 in the last three years. Like during your own time, during the holidays, like you're still going to be proactive and you're still going to have things to do with veterinary medicine and just like rotate in work placements. And with regards to patients, have you done PFP yet? Yeah, so we have something called PFP and in first year this involves two visits, one to um, see patients in a GP like practice and one where you go to the patient's home and I, last week I did the one where I went to a patient's home and there were two of us and we interviewed a woman for about uh, 50 minutes, um, an hour on her her um, health issues uh, and how she felt about them, her experiences. It was quite, it wasn't like anything, we weren't taking history, we weren't trying to diagnose or anything. It was just more to get a sense of healthcare from the patient's point of view. Mm. It was actually a really, it was a really good experience. It was really fun. We got on very well with her. She was quite a, quite a character. Uh, <laughs> we had um, an elderly man who'd like been through Cambridge and he was a physicist or something. And he'd, he was, I think he had dementia. So it was like, it was really interesting actually speaking to a patient mm. and like just really, oh, yeah, it's just nice to really get mm. to know them. I remember um, asking um, what she wanted in like for the future. I meant in terms of her health, mm. and she said world peace. So you know, she was quite a, quite a sweet woman. Um, so of course you are at Cambridge, so you can pretty much add like the forefront of medical research or the forefront of lots of innovation. Mm. Like, does it feel as if you're in like a place where new ideas it's are always around? It's amazing because during lectures you're like learning about things and they're like, yes, this was discovered in the lab next door five years ago but by one of the Cambridge students. Like, wow, that's amazing. And actually some of our lectures teach us about things that they discovered by themselves, mm. which really makes it interesting. It's amazing. Have you heard about them, like what's in a crick and how one of our supervisors always yes. says, oh, I knew them, they were down the river. Yeah. 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 And all our like, course texts are like ones the lecturers have written. Yeah. Um, and I remember there's one, our supervisor recommended this book on physiology and in the front there's like a shout out to our lecturer. It's like <laughs> big thanks to Chris Wang. Um, <laughs> oh, I love, I love <laughs> Professor Wang, he's great. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah so the, even the textbooks are written by the lecturers themselves. So mm-hmm. when you come here to Cambridge, you get like the, the best print in the yeah, world yeah. at um, at two years. That's good. Oh, how many minutes? So when, yeah, when you come to Cambridge, you do get the best of people teaching you um, in the world. Now, why do you like Cambridge? Like, why do you guys apply to Cambridge as opposed to, let's say, Oxford? Do you have any personal reasons? Did you um, visit there Cambridge? is no veterinary medicine at Oxford. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's all laughs> That's quite simple. <laughs> um, so for me, there were a few things that went to it. There's um, a slightly larger cohort at Cambridge. It's sort of a more people. I kind of wanted that. Like, uh, you know, I like, I like, you know, like there'd be a lot of people yeah. around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, Adam Brooks as well is a bigger Huge hospital than, yeah. than John Radcliffe um, and so I decided you know, six years as well now Cambridge you don't have that moving thing after preclinical years that Oxford still does and so I decided so you can't you know, go to London or to you have to stay yeah, in Cambridge and so like, so, yeah. you know, perhaps some people want to go to London but I was pretty happy to stay in Cambridge with Adam Brooks and Adam Brooks is a really like regional centre I thought yeah. that was a really good aspect and then like I said before uh, full uh, cadaver uh, full dice full body dissection rather than pro section yeah. is really I think is really helpful for learning 
was really excited by that and just Cambridge is better it's just a beautiful place <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. when you go to lectures in the morning when you like I don't know ride about town you just see like so many beautiful things yeah. it's just a lovely it's like, just, like walk through the sand it's like wow how am I here it's amazing yeah, yeah, yeah you just look around the buildings and you're yeah. just like I'm studying and sometimes you just stop and look around it's kind of surreal right yeah <laughs> so let's say you were you know in the, in the shoes of many people watching this you're in sixth form mm-hmm. or let's say you're, you're 11 you're 15 14 15 years old maybe 16 and you're thinking about applying to Cambridge what bits of advice would you give to people if you want to come here um, in the future? One thing is like even if you're only just thinking about it, like do apply, do give it a shot. Like all, the, all, all that can happen is like you can get rejected, but it's like it's nothing. So like always apply. It's not as hard to get in as you would think. Like if you're the kind of person that would fit in here, that would like enjoy the experience, you will get in. And if no, that means that like if you got here, you would just be like really stressed by everything. So yeah, I think they choose the people who want to be here. Yeah, exactly. The system works quite well. Um, those who don't get in, I think it's for a reason. It's because the people exactly. who are interviewing... They wouldn't enjoy their experience here. Mm. What do you think about, you know, what advice would you give to people? I think, especially from medicine and vet med, work experience is really important. Yeah. I mean, um, for not just, like, Oxbridge, but for whatever medical school you want to go to, uh, work experience is really important. Um, Why is it so important? As in, what do you gain from it? You're, when, you, when you get into study medicine, you're not just like another student studying any other undergraduate course you're a, you're a trainee a sort of a trainee doctor in a way like you're you've already signed up to a profession mm-hmm. and if that's not a profession that you've experienced witnessed that you're not sure you want to do and that's a very very big step in the dark and it's not really a decision you can make responsibly without having experience a healthcare environment and really deciding that's what you want to do now some people do decide that's one that what they want to do at age whatever 17 when you apply yeah. and then they get to being a doctor and they actually change their mind but you know that's just something that happens it's very, it's very important that you really decide yeah. this is what you want to do yeah and it's not that just work experience just like go out and do as much as possible of everything like become an interesting person like find many like, <laughs> hobbies just like yeah. see what you enjoy because like that's really really important I think you still what you love pretty much, right? Mm-hmm. If you if you really like if you do what you really like and if you follow your interests, it will just come across when you apply. And then they want people who are interested in things they like, as opposed to yeah. people who seem as if they are interested just to yeah. try and get in. Um, yeah, from just you know not not just your work, from extracurricular activities to whatever you're doing, even if it's a small project, if you put your hundred percent sort of effort into it, it will come across. And it's um yeah, it's it's I think it's recognised. Um, now about Jesus College. So many people also watching this will love Ooh. Jesus College. You guys are crazy Jesus about Jesus College. College. The best yes. college out there by far in every aspect. What aspects? As in, what are your favorite things about Jesus? The location, because we're quite central, but at the same time we don't get like the influx of tourists, so it's quite like nice. Then we're really relaxed. Like nobody pushes you into academia that much, so you also have time to enjoy like sports and like extracurriculars and things like that. People are amazing. Food is good. Yeah. Accommodation is great. Just yeah. Can't really I think <laughs> our, our greatest asset is the space. We have loads of space, yeah. which is slightly on the edge of town. And so a lot of space means you've got better like sp- facilities, sporting facilities. Mm. Um, and also it means we are accommodation, not just for fresh, fresh accommodations, all in college. It's all really good. It's all really nice. But then for second and third years, we've got the row of houses across the road are all Jesus accommodation. So I know in other colleges you get you can get moved out quite a way away. Like you fight with the town for the colleges. Yeah, yeah, and um, and because of Jesus, everybody's a lot closer together. Everyone's around college. It sort of it promotes a stronger college atmosphere because everybody's so close. Together. So close together. Literally. 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 You, you can't run away from people. You yeah. have to socialize. You have no choice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we've got like a new bar as well. So yeah. that's a that's a good excuse. We've got like got the JCR to hang out in. Um, we're actually filming the pool room, so people come and play in the pool room once in a while. Yeah. yeah. So there, as in, like from musical societies, sporting societies, there are yeah. so many things you can do. Um, Definitely. But yeah. Anyway, uh, do you guys have anything else? Any last bits of information that you'd like to impart? Mm. Try hard to stay in school. <laughs> <laughs> Try hard. That's that's good. That's good. Uh, yeah. Um, anyway, thank you so much, to Susanna and Joe, for joining me today. Um, hopefully you found this sort of uh, really chilled, relaxed, uh, sort of talkative session here super useful. Um, and once again, shout out to Medify for making this video <laughs> possible. Um, do you want to shout out to Medify as well? As in I, would love, I would love to shout out to Medify. <laughs> Big shout out to Medify. So from Susanna, Joe and I, uh, thank you so much <laughs> once again. <laughs> and um, take care and we'll see, uh, we'll see you in future videos.